Welcome to Finished Work International Ministries, a ministry that is on the cutting edge, changing lives around the world. As you let God in today and apply the word, expect a divine encounter and supernatural transformation. It is impossible for you to be defeated when you have the revelation of the will of God. It is impossible for situations to subdue you when you walk in understanding of what God is saying to you. Let the finished work of Jesus determine what you pray. When God is your source, you don't look back. You keep looking forward. You keep trusting Him. God, I trust you. Here's Apostle Faith Man Obuena. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and be glad. You're welcome to this live transforming broadcast. And today I will share with you, let the word and the spirit take the lead. Let God's word and his spirit take the lead. If we fail to recognize the potential, the ability, and the purpose of the Word of God, it will be difficult for us to enforce our victory and manifest the will of God. If the Word of God is not taking the lead, it will be difficult for you to experience the manifestation of the will of God. The truth established in Colossians 3.16 is that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Is that let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. You know, we can't truly manifest the will of God without walking in the revelation of his finished work. We can't truly manifest the will of God. I can do that. You can do that. Without having the revelation of his finished work. This is why we need to have the word of God in our spirit. Because with God's word in your spirit, you will see things the way they are. You will see things the way God wants you to look at things. You're not going to look at situation or whatever that is happening around you from a point of defeat or frustration, but you're going to look at things from the perspective of his will. Let the word and the spirit take the lead. It was the word and the spirit that brought creation into existence. Everything that God made, he did it through his word and his spirit. So we can't neglect any of them. For you to be spiritually minded, you have to be rooted in the Word of God. How do you know that someone is spiritually minded? It's because they are rooted in God's Word. You measure your spiritual growth based on your level of submission to the Word of God. You measure your spiritual growth based on your level of submission to the word of God, to the degree you submit to God's word reveals your spiritual growth or reveals your spiritual maturity to the degree you submit to the word of God. If a person is not submitting to God's word, it means they are not growing spiritually. If a person is not a doer of the word of God, it means they are not coming into maturity. How do you know a mature believer? It's not because they... They have manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. But when we look at their lifestyle, it is in opposition to the truth of God's Word. No. You know a mature believer by their fruits. If you say you're matured, if you say you're growing in faith, do you have the fruit to prove? Do you have the fruit because Jesus said, by their fruits we shall know them. How are we going to know them? By their fruits. And the word is the fruit producer. It is the word of God that helps us to develop the fruits in our spirits. 
When you got born again, there is love in your spirit. There is peace in your spirit. The recreated spirit is full of love, peace, joy, faithfulness. Everything we could see in Galatians chapter 5 is in the other fruits of the spirit mentioned in Galatians chapter 5 is in the recreated human spirit. Now, for we to have the manifestation, we need to cultivate, we need to cultivate the what we already have in us. And how are we going to cultivate it? By allowing God's word to speak to us. I can be reading God's word, but I've not let the word to speak to me. I can be preaching God's word, but I've not allowed the word to, to minister to me. There are a lot of people who see preaching as what they do professionally. But that is not what it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be doers then preachers. We're supposed to be doers and then preachers. Not preachers then doing. Like what the Bible is saying in Acts chapter 1 verse 1. What Jesus began both to do and to teach. You know, you see the doing confess, then you can be able to share from your personal work with God what he's doing. Now, the word and the spirit works together. The word and the spirit works together. And if you want to see greater manifestation of what God wants you to experience, you should never neglect the word of God or the spirit of God. I've seen believers who want to have more manifestations of the spirit, but they have no foundation of the word of God. So they go, they, they, uh, you see them coming into heresy. You see them uh, walking in deception. You see them being deceived because they don't know the truth. Jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. Well, what makes you free is truth. And truth comes by the word. In John Gospel chapter 8 from verse 30 to 32, if you look at the Jesus said to those Jews that believe in him, he said, if you continue in my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. He said, you will know the truth and the truth will make you free. So God's word in my spirit empowers me to flow in the will of God. I can't truly flow in the will of God. I can't truly know what the will of God is for my life. Except by knowing the, the written word and having intimacy with God's spirit. The, the knowledge of the written word brings order. Intimacy with God's spirit brings direction. The knowledge of the written word helps you to operate in order. You know, the scripture said, let everything be done decently and in order. If, I, if you don't have the knowledge of the written word, things will not be done decently. But it takes the knowledge of the written word for things to be done decently and in order. Without the knowledge of the written word, faith will be hindered. So the word and the spirit works together. Your ability to relate with these two personalities will make all the difference in your life. The word of God, the spirit of God. The word of God, the spirit of God. Just because you read a portion of a scripture doesn't mean that is the that you have received all the revelations in that scripture. The word of God is a progressive revelation. And because a progressive revelation, we have to desire to know. You got to be hungry for more of him. More of his word. More of his ways of doing things for you to be able to prosper in his will. Without God's word in your spirit, it will be difficult for you to fulfill the purpose of God for your life. Whatever God has called you to do, his word and the spirit must take the lead 
for you to be fruitful in that assignment or in that calling. You may be gifted, you may be anointed with so much abilities, but, but you need to be led by the Spirit. You need to function according to God's Word. Now, I want to show you something in Genesis chapter 1. The Word and the Spirit must always be in unity in your life. The Word and the Spirit must be in unity in your life. If you want to see great things, the Word and the Spirit must be in unity. You know, there are a lot of believers who they pray very well. They spend a lot of time praying, but they don't read the Bible. They pray very well. Then you have another group who can read their Bible very well, who can fellowship with the Word very well, but they don't spend time praying. So, but we need to do the two to have the flow. I should enjoy to pray. I should enjoy to read the Word. I must enjoy the books. I must enjoy to pray. Prayer is a way of life for a man of the Spirit. As a prayer is a way of life for a man of the Spirit. It is how you live. Like I said yesterday, I was sharing in our, in our Zoom church that we, we, we don't worship to come into the presence of God. Worship is what we do from God's presence. We are born into the presence of God. If any man being Christ is a new creature, you are born into the family of God. And because you are born into the family of God, you are in the presence of the Father. In His presence, we worship. In His presence, we pray. In His presence, we preach. We need to have this revelation that we are in the presence of God. If we don't have that revelation that we are in the presence of God, we will always try to get into His presence. We will always say, bring me into the presence of God. But the truth of it is that the day you got born again, you were born into His presence. When, when children are born in your families, uh, when, when you have a child, when you have a baby, the baby is giving back to into that family. The baby is going to have the name of that family. It is going to have the name of that family, babies are born into the family. You, 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 you cannot say, okay, it's not, this baby is not born into this family, so every time you take baby out. No, it doesn't make sense. In the natural, people in the natural understood that when you give birth, you're, you're giving birth to a child, and the baby is born into the family. Now, in the U.S., there is a law that any child born in the U.S., as from the best of my knowledge, that that child becomes a U.S. citizen. So imagine the person who gave birth to that child was not his dad or his mom is not a U.S. Maybe they came there to have child, maybe to come to the hospital in the U.S. because of the good health care and they give birth to the child. The child becomes a U.S. citizen. Why? He's born into the place. He's born into that country. So the people in the natural understood that, but the church is here to understand, people in the body of Christ, is yet to understand that they are born into the presence of God. That right now, you are in the presence of God. If you're born again, you're in God's presence. So, because you're in His presence, there are, that is why we're told to practice the presence of God. To practice. Huh? You, you can't practice His presence except you are in His presence. And how do you practice the presence of God? Number one, you have to be conscious that you are in the presence of God. Number one, if you're going to practice the presence of God, you have to be conscious that I am in the presence of God. I am in the presence of God. You know, someone said, but can you show me scripture that has to do with that? And I told you to open Genesis chapter 1, but I'm going to come back to that place. But let me just do this. Okay, in Acts chapter 17, in Acts 17, thank you, Holy Spirit. We are born into the presence of God. We are expected to function from His presence. Now, in Acts 17, verse 28, it said, For in Him we live, 
For in him we live. We are, we are told we, in him we live and move and have our being. It is in him. It is in Christ. You know, the scripture also talk about in whom we have redemption. In whom we have redemption. Now, we just read that scripture. Uh, Acts 17 verse 28. Let me show you something here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, i like us to look at Ephesians 1 verse 7. In Ephesians 1 verse 7, he said, In whom we have redemption through his blood. In whom we have redemption. So, the day you got born again, you were born into the family of God. And right now, you are in his presence. But you have to be conscious of his presence. You can truly practice the presence of God or have manifestation of his presence without being conscious of his presence. You, 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 can, you, can, you can have manifestation of his presence. There is a glory in his presence. There is power in his presence. There is miraculous power in his presence. There is healing in his presence. There is deliverance in his presence. He, he wants us to manifest his presence. And whenever we manifest his presence, the miraculous begins to happen. The things that we have considered impossible begins to happen. Why? Because we are manifesting his presence. It is when we walk in the knowledge of his presence that is available to us that we start seeing manifestations. You, you, you don't see manifestations until you have the revelation that I live in the presence of God I function from the presence of God. That mentality will produce spiritual boldness. That mentality that I live in the presence of God, I function from the presence of God, will produce supernatural mentality, will produce supernatural boldness. That's the right thing. Will produce supernatural boldness to confront any situation. To deal with any circumstances, the, the presence of God is our advantage. Because we're born into his presence, we have advantage. But if we don't walk in the consciousness of his presence, we can't have manifestations. Because manifestation is directly related to your ability to enforce his presence. You know, in situation or in circumstances and and how do we enforce his presence? One of the ways is when we pray in the name of Jesus. When you pray in the name of Jesus, you are enforcing the presence of God on situation or, or whatever you're praying against or praying for. You're, you're enforcing the presence of God on it. So when we say in Jesus' name, we are releasing the presence of the Father into the situation. That was what happened in Acts chapter 3. When Peter and John was going to the temple during the hour of prayer, and they saw the man at the beautiful gate, and they said, Peter said, Silver and gold don't I have, but such as I have I give to you in the name of Jesus. That is what people in the presence do. People who live in the presence of God will use the name of Jesus with an expectation to see transformation and change. They use the name of Jesus with an expectation. Why? Because they function. From the presence of God. And because they function from the presence of God, the, the name of Jesus becomes a seal of authority that it could use to change situation. So Peter, Peter said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. You know, and it, it was in his name, if you read the book of Acts, you will notice there were so much, so many miracles, healing, signs, and wonder done in the name of Jesus because the early church had the revelation that they, they are functioning from the presence of God. And that was why he said, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. You know, if you read First John 4, verse 4, a portion of it there said, greater is he that is in you. He's in you. He's in you. So it, you, we, we need to understand that we are in the presence of God. Another key to practicing God's presence is to walk in the consciousness that his presence is available to you. You need to walk in that consciousness that the presence of God is available to me. The presence of God is available to me. 
The presence of God is available to me. You need to be conscious that if, if I get to the west or to the east or to the north or to the south, his presence is available. I can do what he wants me to do because his presence is available. Another key to manifesting the presence of God is to walk in the consciousness that the presence of God is in your advantage. You need to walk in that consciousness that God's presence is my advantage. I am living in his presence. His presence is for my advantage. Hallelujah. So for we to practice his presence, we must get into the word of God. Whenever you are reading your Bible, you are, you are breaking your... Okay, let me break this way. Whenever you are reading your Bible, you are coming in contact with revelations of his presence. As you are reading the Bible... You are coming in contact with the revelation of his presence. And, and this revelation has the potential to stir up your faith for supernatural result. Hallelujah. So, so when you read the Bible, you're, you're, you're reading about his presence. You're reading about the things that happens in his presence. And before you realize your faith to begin to rise, because you're reading about him, healing, miracle, deliverance, happens in his presence. That was why Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he anointed me to preach the gospel. He acknowledged the Spirit. He acknowledged the Spirit. And will begin to make progress in manifesting his presence when we acknowledge the Spirit. The Spirit is in us for we to manifest the presence of God. That was why the scripture said in Romans 8.11, it was shared, Paul was writing in Romans 8 11, a portion of it there said, If the spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken your mortal bodies. Now, the spirit that raised Jesus is in us. And that spirit can quicken you, can give life to your mortal body. That spirit can energize your dream, your vision, your purpose, your assignment. That spirit that raised Jesus from the dead can empower you. So, I want us to get to a point where we we are not distracted by what is happening around us. We need to understand that we have advantage over adversaries, over opposition, over situation. You have advantage over the medical report you had last week. You have advantage over the financial report. Because why? Because we we we, we, we Christ in us. Christ in us means God in us. God has come to stay in us. And you are, how can you be carrying Christ and be defeated? Christ in you. He's not outside you. Colossians 1.27 Christ in you. Christ in you. Christ in you. You know, if we begin to understand that he's in us, we will stop trying to reach him. A lot of people are trying to reach God. Why God have already reached them and wants to have relationship with them? Don't try to reach God. He's already in you. He said, Christ in you. <laughs> How can you try to reach out to someone in you? He's already in you. We well, don't reach out to him. We're in fellowship with him. Wow. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We well, don't reach out to him. So I'm not trying to reach out to God. I'm not trying to reach God. He's already in me. Christ in you. The hope of glory. Paul said that. John said, greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. They're giving us the picture that these men have the revelation that he's already in. That he's already in. He's not going to come in. If you're born again, he's in. You know, many years ago when I was in primary school, we used to sing a song. Let me try to sing it. It's about close to... Oh, maybe... Uh, <laughs> this song is about close to 30, 33 years or 34 years I heard this song. Into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to stay, come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. You know, so when we primary school, we used to sing it. If we sing it on Monday, we'll come back on Tuesday and sing it. Come into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus, come in to stay. We'll sing it on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll come back, come into my heart. So when will he finally come in? 
Is it that he's coming in and he's not walking out? He's not abiding. <laughs> wow, gosh. <laughs> and and, and that, that's what is also going on in church today. <laughs> A lot of people are trying to reach God, but he's already in them. <laughs> There are a lot of meetings people are doing. Oh, we need to reach God. We need to reach God. But the truth of it is in you. What he wants is fellowship. A relationship. Not you trying to reach him. God is not far from us. God is in us. Christ in you. In him we live, move, and have our being. Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. In whom? In whom? We have redemption. All of these scriptures are pointing us back to the knowledge of He's living in you. The living Christ is living in you. The living Christ is in you. So because it's in me, it means His presence is in me. I live in His presence. He is in me. He's around me. And let me say this to us. When you walk in the revelation that he is in you and he is walking through you, it will be difficult for you to be defeated. I want to say that again. If you walk in this revelation that he is in you and he's walking through you, nothing can defeat you. So the word and the spirit works together. And with the word and the spirit, there is no limit to what you can achieve or what you can become. The word and the spirit. Now, the first scripture I said to show up on is Genesis 1. I didn't have the time to read it. We just jumped it and went to other scriptures we read. But let's look at Genesis 1. Today I'm teaching on let the word and the spirit take the lead in your life. Okay, in Genesis chapter 1, I want to read from verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven the heaven and the earth. God created. And verse 2 said, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the spirit of God moved. We, we, what we notice this, that the spirit moved. The, the, the spirit moves. The spirit can move you, into ministering healing to people. The Spirit can move you to minister healing to people. The Spirit can move you to give. The Spirit can move you to speak the word. The Spirit can move you to pray in the Spirit. So the Spirit is in, in us to move us. The Spirit is in us to move us. That was why the scripture said in Romans 8 14, as men that are led. To be led means one of the ways that when you're being led, you're being moved. He's going this way, then he wants you to follow him. You're moving to that direction. And the spirit was moved. Was moved. So we, we need to get to a point where we are quick to know where the spirit of God is moving us to. What he's moving us into. What he's calling us into. He, he's calling us into something. He, he, he's moving us into something. We need to be conscious what the Spirit of God is moving us into. And this is very strategic if you're going to fulfill your calling in business, in ministry, in your relationship, in your assignment. You need to be moved by the Spirit. You, you, you can't move yourself. That was why he said, if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he will quicken. Now, the, the assignment of the Spirit is to quicken, is to give life, is to give direction, is to, is to empower you to come into manifestation. You, you, <clears throat> you can come into manifestation by the Spirit. I can come into manifestation except by the Spirit. He said, and the Spirit moved him. What is, sorry, let me read this. He said, and, and the Spirit moved upon the face of the water, upon the face of the waters, and God said, first the Spirit moved, then we saw that God said. The Spirit moved, then God spoke. So we'll have the Spirit of God, we'll have the Word of God. Without the Word and the Spirit, you cannot correct anything that's gone wrong in your life. Situation when things went wrong here, it was corrected by the presence of the Spirit and the Word. 
That is how you correct your life. That is how you reposition things. If things are not working well, if things are not moving according to your expectation, pay attention to the spirit and the word. They have the potential to bring order. If you can yield to them, if you can listen to their instruction, if you can follow their concept, the, the spirit can show you what to do. He can move you into restoration. He can move you into supernatural idea that will change the situation and empower you to take the lead in the right direction. So it's by the spirit. Then when the spirit moved, the next thing we saw, and God said, so we saw that the spirit and the word are in partnership. And you cannot truly succeed in whatever God has called you to do without valuing or honoring the Spirit and the Word. And this is what will change your life, empower your vision, help you in whatever God has called you to do when you choose to listen to the Word and the Spirit. They are, they are, these are the pillars that carry our eternal foundation. These are the pillars that carry our dreams, the word and the spirit. If you know how to relate with the word and the spirit, you're going to be a champion all the time. You're going to be victorious all the time because you know how to relate with the word of God and the spirit of God. You see, when it comes to speaking God's word, it's not something you do because you're excited or because you're glad. So what about the days you will not be excited or you will not be glad, so you be quiet? No. We we'll speak the word of God because that is what is, we are supposed to do. That is what is right to be done. That is what we should be doing. We should be speaking the word of God. We should be led by the Spirit of God. We should meditate on the word of God. In Joshua 1 verse 8, the word of the Lord came to Joshua and said, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but thou shalt meditate day and day and night. It will make your way prosperous. The New Testament version of that Joshua 1 verse 8 is 2 Timothy 2.15 and Colossians 3.16. They are the New Testament version of that same word that God gave to Joshua. Paul said to Timothy, study to show yourself approved to God, a workman that need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, admonishing one another in hymns and psalms. You know, let the word dwell in you richly. Let the word dwell in you. Because when the word is in you, you know, the scripture said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So what, what, what I'm going to bring forth is as a result of what is in my spirit. It's a result of what is in my spirit. Because I'm going to do a teaching, maybe today. It's, to, it's about how, the, why, is, why is the word of God not working for some people? Even when they are believers. Why is the word of God not working for them? There are a lot of things that is choking the word. There are things choking the word. We're going to talk about that today. But I want you to understand that the word and the spirit are partners to enable us to produce the God kind of result. The word and the spirit are partners. So you need to get to a point in your walk with God where you, you value the word. You value the spirit. Without the spirit and the word, you will always be defeated by things you ought to defeat. You will always be defeated. You will always lose battles. You will always be offended and be angry and walk away and you never got into your destination. Why? Because the word and the spirit are the foundation for true success. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray for everyone that is watching this broadcast. I pray they walk in supernatural revelation of those things we have shared. Holy Ghost amplified in their spirit and help them to flow with your will. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'd like you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth I believe in my heart that God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray this prayer with me, it means you're born again. And the Spirit of God is going to lead you from this day forward. And you won't remain the same. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. 
Well, I want to encourage you to consider partnering with this ministry. One of my passion is to keep reaching people with the word of God. Because I love you. I love people. I love I like people to get the word of God. So I like you to partner with me. I like you to consider being my friend. And so uh, let's do this ministry together. Let's reach out to more people. It's not a bad denomination. It is about kingdom advancement. This is not about denomination. This is about kingdom advancement. So it's, it's a we have a kingdom project to reach a billion people. That's our kingdom project to reach out to one billion people, to, to bring the gospel to one billion people. So be among our friends and partners who praise for me, who partner with me to be able to take this message of our Lord Jesus Christ to the nations. Thank you so much for being part of this broadcast. You can partner with us by going to finishworktv.com. By going to finishworktv.com, you can partner with us and you can slash giving and give as the Spirit of God will lead you. Thank you for being part of this broadcast. And it's like, come your way soon. Please don't forget this. There is greatness in you and Jesus is coming soon.